is there any chance that this meeting with MTL actually does anything to save these sports? There has to be, right? Because they never would have publicly announced such a meeting if they weren't at least considering bringing these sports back. Let's be honest, Stanford and Mark Tessier Levine in particular need a PR win right now. It has not been a great year for the university. It has not been a great year for its president. This would be a chance for him to get to, to get some positive publicity. To be honest, as, as both of us have questioned this decision throughout, have strongly criticized this decision throughout, I'm not going to give him too much praise for reversing it if that's what he ultimately ends up doing. But nevertheless, it would at least be some good good press in his name. Is the MTL, you know, he was part of making this decision to cut the sports, but he was also part of the decision to bring them back in this heroic gesture. And so I don't know why you would publicly announce that you're from these sports if you are not strongly considering bringing them back because now you're setting yourself up, up for an even bigger PR nightmare if you go ahead and cut them anyway. After you've said that you're going to bring them back, or, or not that, excuse me, after you've said that you're meeting with representatives of these sports who want to bring them back, if you then say, yeah, you know, nothing came out of those meetings, we're still cutting you, that's going to be another shot to the heart for representatives of those sports and really for the Stanford athletic community as a whole. And it's also going to reflect really poorly on MTL and his leadership. I know the decision is not entirely up to him. I know that it's going back to the board for review. We're not going to get a decision particularly soon. But I think there's been a lot of noise. If you've seen Stanford athletes recently, a lot of them are wearing 36 sports strong. You have athletes who are covering up the Stanford on their jersey um, because they're not going to stand for an institution that cuts a sport that they're either participating in or that their friends are participating in. There's been a lot of, of um, backlash against this decision, I think more than the university expected. To be honest, when I think about it, I think that the university made this decision thinking that people were just going to, they were just going to go along with it and say, oh, you know what, one of these sports was involved in the Varsity Blues scandal. Um, so, you know, we want to get rid of sailing and you know what, none of these sports are that big anyway. It's, gonna, it's not going to be a big deal. We're going to do it in the middle of the pandemic. Nobody will even notice. I think it, it that was uh, a strongly misguided, severely misguided idea because guess what? People at Stanford care about all sports and there are such strong alumni community in every one of these sports and they were going to fight this like hell and they were going to point out the hypocrisy that they've already nearly raised enough money to support these sports. It's not about the money, folks. It is about a decision to take away a large piece of the athletic community to shift Stanford's focus away from sports and also to try to make up for the varsity blues scandal, which by the way, had nothing to do with the athletes on these teams who are going to be suffering from this decision. So good on 36 sports strong for pointing out the hypocrisy and for moving the needle. If MTL reverses the decision, I'm not going to be happy with them, but at least I won't be as mad. And I think that they have to be thinking about it if they had this meeting in the first place. Stanford should be embarrassed that there are athletes winning national championships and don't even want to represent Stanford. We're talking about Stanford here, King, and they don't want to represent their school because Stanford has turned their back on them. And if you talk to anyone involved with 36 Sports Strong, they've told you all along, this makes no sense. There's no logical explanation why, once again, in college, we're punishing the students, the athletes, for something that has nothing to do with them in any way. Stanford should absolutely be supporting these programs as they have done, as they promised to do. And the fact that they went back on it in the first place is horrible. The fact that they went back on that promise and in a Zoom meeting cut all of these sports is truly embarrassing. And now that embarrassment is only seen over and over again when you have press releases with the 36 Sports Strong logo all over them because the athletes are still wearing that t-shirt. And that goes back to what you were saying is that Stanford never expected any backlash. They thought that this was going to be a one-time thing in the summer. It gets hidden in all the rest of the pandemic news. It's gone. Everyone accepts it. But of course, that's not the way that Stanford works. And good on Stanford. As you were saying, everyone involved with this effort fully expects that MTL reverses the decision. Jeremy Jacobs, who is a men's volleyball player, graduated in 2006, 
came out and basically says like it would be shocking if the decision was left in place. And I think they're in the right here, as you were saying, to be confident that the decision will be overturned because frankly, as we've been going over, it doesn't make any sense. There's all of this evidence in support of supporting these student athletes. There are so many reasons to keep these sports, not in the, the least of which is that the two reasons that Stanford gave financial excellence, financials and competitive excellence are just not the case at all. Stanford is winning national championships in these exact same sports, and the financials, as a 36 sports strong group has mentioned, are not what they seem to be. Stanford supposedly said these programs cost would cost $200 million to endow. That number is clearly wrong based on the fact that a lot of these sports are already self-endowed. I think squash, for one, already has a significant endowment. I know wrestling has another and then on top of that, Stanford didn't even reach out to donors. So clearly there was something a little bit fishy, but that fishy thing was on Stanford's side where they're not giving real reasons for cutting these teams. And here we are almost a full year later and there are plenty of people willing to write the ship. They're willing to meet with MTL and the other members in that community in that uh, meeting, which included the board of trustees subcommittee. And so they're going back to the full board as you said, I think we can fully expect them to reverse this decision, which frankly should never have been made in the first place. Absolutely. It never should have been made. And that is what I do want people to keep track of in your mind uh, when this decision comes out and when these sports are likely brought back. Do remember that Stanford had the audacity to cut them in the first place and that this is not a heroic story of Stanford bringing on more sports of providing more opportunities for more student athletes. This is a story of a bunch of student athletes who had their hearts ripped out from their chest. And then they were partially sewn back in a few months later, but they've gone through months of hell fighting tooth and nail to back. That's the kind of responsibility they never should have had to take on in their time on the farm. That was not part of the expectation. And of course, I think the fact they're getting a, a lawsuit as well from some of the parents of these sports is significant. Um, I think, you know, Stanford never wants to be on the wrong end of a lawsuit or a situation where they're going to lose money. Um, but again, this that's another example of the fact that people did not go quietly into the night. The representatives of these sports did not go quietly into the night. They fought this up with a positive outcome for them. Um, and congratulations to Stanford Synchronized Swimming on a fantastic victory that could not have come at a better time. Right after MTL has this meeting with 36 Sports Strong, and right as the board is deliberating about whether to reverse this decision, one of these sports that you claimed was not competitive enough for your liking went out and won a daggum national championship. And we've seen success from a number of these sports um, throughout the season. It's so hard to know that th this game, may or, any game, any competition may or may not be your last and may or may not be the last for your sport ever at Stanford. Thankfully, it looks like that's not going to be the case anymore. But the psychological trauma that went into everything these athletes have gone through for the past few months is just something that they can never be undone and something we can never let Stanford forget about. Um, but again, this is a testament to the power of hard work, of protest, of um, consistent pressure on leadership, because those are what got this done. This 36 Sports Strong movement has really emerged in the past few months, but it's been there since that decision came out in July. Um, and I think you have seen, you know, the Twitter pages for Save Stanford Wrestling, Save Stanford Men's Volleyball are, are bigger than the sports themselves. Like you're seeing a ton, a ton of alumni pressure, this big petition that comes out that honestly didn't have as many signatures as I thought, but those signatures came from very prominent alumni. This was not one that was getting passed around to us. Um, this was one that was going around to former student athletes from a lot of sports. I saw Adam Keefe's name very high up on the list. Turns out, folks, that every Stanford student athlete and every former Stanford student athlete wants these sports to come back. Even the men's basketball and football representatives who are the ones who are supposedly going to be benefiting from this decision. If we're, if we're reading between the lines, the competitive excellence thing was, you know what, we need to become more like Alabama, more like Ohio State. We need to become an athletic department that is focused on the big sports. We're too spread out right now. Our funding needs to go to, let's just probably go with football, men's basketball, and women's basketball. It may be just those three. 
And yet even people from those sports recognize, first of all, this is not going to help us. Don't, don't talk about that. And at what cost? Like, even if this was going to help us, it's not worth other people losing their sport. So it was a ludicrous decision. It's hopefully going to have a happier ending. Um, but throughout, it shows something that I have unfortunately noticed quite a bit from Stanford this entire year um, in inter interaction with the students is that it does not put its students first. And in very few instances, is Stanford's first priority, its students' well-being. And that's something that's got to change if the university is going to progress through the 21st century with the same kind of success as it's enjoyed since its inception.